Assalamu alaikum, uh, uh, my dear students. Welcome again to another lecture in uh, clinical toxicology. Uh, today we are going to discuss the toxicology of um, pesticides. Uh, here are a list of my uh, expected learning objectives for this lecture. So starting by knowing the definition of a pesticide, um, according to the um, Environmental Protection Agency in the United States, any substance or a mixture of substance intended to, for preventing, destroying, repelling, or mitigating any insect, uh, rodents, nematodes, fungi, or weeds, or any other forms of life declared to be pests, uh, any substance or mixture of substance is called a pesticide and it's important to know that um, the suffix side when added to a word it is it refers to killing or elimination of this organism or species therefore when we say uh, bactericides mean killing of bacteria fungicide refers to killing fungi uh, rodenticides refers to substance that kills rodents and herbicides refers to substance used to get rid of weeds there are several classifications uh, for pesticides, but for the sake of this lecture, we will focus on the groups listed in, uh, on this slide. Starting with organophosphate. Organophosphorus compounds are the insecticides that are uh, most used in Egypt. There are more than 40 different types known and used nowadays, either individually or in mixed forms. Organophosphate poisoning occurs due to accidental exposure to this group of pesticides, mainly in agriculture and related occupations. Accidental toxicity co commonly happen in children um, as they have very small surface area and uh, organophosphates is rapidly absorbed through the skin and mucous membranes. Suicidal exposure also happen uh, very, very common in developing countries, exam for example, uh, in India. And homicidal exposure to um, organophosphate occurs by using uh, chemical warfare agents as the nerve gas. Uh, in 1995, a touristic attack took place in Tokyo where sarin gas was released in the subway during the rush hour, killing 13 people and severely injuring uh, other 50, which um, some of whom were died later on, and uh, also causing uh, vision problems for nearly uh, 1,000 uh, other victims. These compounds are rapidly absorbed through the skin and mucous membrane, and therefore using protective equipment when using uh, or handling these compounds is very essential to prevent toxicity. As you all know, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter at the cholinergic synaptic nerve endings, and it is degraded by the acetylcholine esterase enzyme following a stimulation of a nerve. Organophosphates are acetylcholine esterase inhibitors and they form a stable, irreversible covalent bond to the enzyme forming phosphorylated enzyme. Organophosphates mediate inhibition of acetylcholine esterase, causes acetylcholine to accumulate and results in initial excessive stimulation followed by depression. Within 48 hours after phosphorylation of the enzyme, the phosphorylated enzymes uh, enzyme the phosphorylated enzyme complex loses um, its al alkyl group in a process called aging and thus cannot regenerate one, uh, once again. Accumulation of acetylcholine at the postganglionic post parasympathetic junctions activates muscarinic receptors and leads to autonomic parasympathetic manifestation of organophosphate toxicity. Accumulation of acetylcholine at the nicotinic receptors lead to musculoskeletal manifestation of organophosphates. And uh, accumulation of uh, acetylcholine at certain synapses in the central nervous system leads to overstimulation by excessive acetylcholine followed by depression. This 
This graph illustrates the dynamics of acetylcholine and acetylcholine straight enzymes at the synaptic space. The green panel shows that after release of acetylcholine at the space, it acts on the receptors. These green parts are the receptors. Um, and the signal transmission is generated. Normally, acetylcholine strays catalyze the degradation of acetylcholine in the synapse, shown here in this yellow panel, and prevent the transmission of signal. Organophosphate pesticides, phosphorylate acetylcholine, Phosphorylate acetylcholine esterase, thereby reducing the ability of the enzyme to break down the um, neurotransmitter, and this produces an accumulation of acetylcholine at uh, the nerve endings, uh, both in the central and peripheral nervous system, resulting in acute cholinergic syndrome. With the, uh, the clinical onset of this cholinergic overstimulation can vary from almost in instantaneous to several hours after exposure. When it comes to the clinical picture, patients exposed to organophosphate compounds can develop symptoms in minutes to days after exposure. The muscarinic manifestations are a translation to the actions of the accumulated acetylcholine on the parasympathetic system. This includes increased secretions in the form of lacrimation, swelling, salivation, uncontrolled emesis, diarrhea, with severe uh, abdominal pain, and also incontinence. The effect of acetylcholine on the eye leads to the characteristic picture of pin -pin pinpoint pupils and meiosis associated with organophosphate toxicity. Additionally, the parasympathetic stimulation leads to bronchospasm, bradycardia, and hypotension. The effect of acetylcholine accumulation on the nicotinic receptors lead to musculoskeletal manifestations in the form of muscle fasciculations and convulsion that are then followed by weakness and paralysis. If the patient has nicotinic receptor oversensitivity, he may develop tachycardia and hypertension. Finally, accumulation of acetylcholine at the central nervous site starts by stimulation, leading to manifestation of anxiety, irritability, convulsions, followed by a stage of depression where the patient develops coma with depression of the cardiovascular and the respiratory centers. Uh, leading to this. To help you remember these symptoms, the mnemonic dumbbells is created as you can see in this slide. When it comes to the cause of death in cases of organophosphate toxicity, respiratory failure is the number one concern. Failure of respiration may be caused by any of the shown mechanisms or the com or combined effect of all of them. The central mechanism caused by depression of the uh, respiratory center and the peripheral effect is either nicotinic caused by failure of the respiratory muscles or muscarinic through bronchospasm and increased bronchial secretions. The patient actually drowns in, in his own secretion. Management of cases of organophosphate starts by stabilization of the patient and checking his airways, the breathing and the circulation, followed by removing all his contaminating clothes with caution to prevent harm to the surrounding people. Occupational history is of significance in these cases. Uh, laboratory work will include arterial blood gases to detect metabolic acidosis, blood sugar to diagnose hyperglycemia, and uh, urine analysis to detect paranitrophenol, which is a metabolite of organophosphates in urine. Other lab tests that detect uh, the blood levels of choline esterases. It can be measured in the RVCs and the nervous system, uh, which is a true choline esterase that indicates the non-acute exposure, or in the plasma. Uh, uh, and these are called the pseudocholine esterases, and it is useful for the diagnosis and monitoring of acute toxicity by organophosphates. 
However, it is important to mention that the diagnosis of the organophosphate toxicity is primarily clinical and depends on the clinical manifestations because the detection of blood levels of choline esterases take days um, it takes days to confirm the diagnosis and usually it is too late to manage critically ill patients. Uh, you can test the diagnosis by checking the response of the patient to the initial treatment, which is atropine, as we will discuss uh, in a few minutes. Um, following that, uh, ECG is uh, very important to um, monitor cardiac arrhythmias and chest x-rays is useful for diagnosis of pneumonia and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Treatment in the ER starts by checking the ABCs as usual, if it is, was not checked before and monitoring the vital functions of the patient. Uh, the process of decontamination is essential in cases of organophosphate poisoning. Uh, the induction of emesis is contraindicated as it carries the risk of aspiration pneumonia. Gastric lavage, however, may be done with activated charcoal to prevent further exposure and is done through large bore or oral gastric tube with the essential protection of the airway to guard against aspiration. Cathartics may be performed to evacuate the contents of the intestine. Skin is washed with uh, copious water to decrease dermal absorption. Remember, it is readily absorbed through the skin. Eye is also flushed with water for at least 15 minutes uh, to prevent uh, absorption from the ocular mucous membrane. Um, atropine antagonizes the muscarinic effect of organophosphate compounds by acting directly on the postsynaptic receptors of acetylcholine. Uh, it is considered as the specific antidote for uh, organophosphate toxicity. The patient response to atropine administrations appears gradually, so the IV injection of atropine should continue till full atropinization in the, in the form of uh, the dilated pupils, dry mouth, and clear chest from the bronchial secretions. Oxemes are the second important antidote in the treatment of organophosphate poisoning. Um, their primary role is to reactivate acetylcholine esterase enzymes after it has been inhibited by organophosphates. Uh, it removes the molecules of organophosphates from the active sites of the enzyme. Unlike atropine, oxenes react directly with organophosphate molecules uh, and um, it does not affect the postsynaptic uh, receptors of acetylcholine. Therefore, they equally um, inhibit the nicotinic and muscarinic uh, manifestations of organophosphates. However, Pralidoxine uh, does not cross the blood-brain barrier and does not reverse the central nervous system manifestations. Um, there are some uh, modifications or um, uh, late manifestations in cases of uh, organophosphate uh, poisoning. Uh, one of them is the intermediate syndrome, which occurs uh, around 24 to 96 hours after poisoning or as a sequelae to the acute exposure. Excess acetylcholine on the neuromuscular junction causes uh, down regulation of the nicotinic receptors, causing muscle weakness and paralysis, usually affecting the proximal neck muscles, leading to um, the patient cannot hold his head from the pillow, and then progresses to dis respiratory distress from the failure of uh, the respiratory muscles. It has no muscarinic signs or manifestations, so the condition is not treatable with atropine. Uh, without inter intervention, the patient develops cyanosis, coma, and this rapidly occur because of the respiratory failure. Incidence is uh, around 8 to 49 percent and it lasts for around few days to uh, about 30 days. 
Another late condition is the organophosphate-induced delayed polyneuropathy. Uh, this occurs around three weeks after acute exposure due to degeneration of long myelinated nerve fibers. The patient develops globs and stop uh, parachesia and paralysis. The condition is very resistant to treatment and may be misdiagnosed with uh, gillian Bre syndrome. Now we move to another uh, class, which is the carbamates. Unlike organophosphates, carbamates act by competitive inhibition of choline esterases as they compete with acetylcholine on the enzyme binding sites. Therefore, it is different than organophosphates in the toxicity um, is reversible and acetylcholine inhibition is of shorter duration. Uh, some carbamates, uh, such as disulfiram and pyridostigmine, are even very mild to be used for medical purposes. Uh, as pesticides, carbamates are commonly used as fungicides, uh, herbicides, insecticides, and hematicides. Compounds, um, common compounds of carbamates uh, are uh, carbaryl and uh, propoxor. Other differences between carbamates and uh, organophosphate toxicity include that carbamates has no CNS manifestation as these compounds do not cross the blood-brain barrier. Additionally, uh, they have reversible action uh, on choline esterases and the serum uh, and RBC levels of these enzymes are not valuable in diagnosis nor monitoring the condition of the patient. Finally, oxymes are not used in the treatment of carbamate toxicity for the same reason. The action is reversible and aging is not expected. We we'll move now to organochlorines. Uh, organochlorines, pesticides, are synthetic pesticides widely used all over the world. They belong to the group of uh, chlorinated hydrocarbons, uh, which have many applications in chemicals, uh, in chemical industry and in agriculture. These compounds are known for their high toxicity, slow degradation, and bioaccumulation. They are highly lipophilic compounds and tend to remain in fatty tissues for years. The use of these compounds has been banned in many developed countries. The mechanism of action of organochlorines is CNS stimulation by disturbing the mem membrane of the neurons leading to hyperexcitability. Uh, cyclodines, hexachlorohexanes, and toxaphene predominantly are gamma aminobenzoic acid, GABA antagonists, and inhibit calcium ion influx, the resulting accumulation of calcium ions at the neuronal in the plates causes sustained release of excitatory neurotransmitters. However, DDT, which is another compound of uh, organochlorines, affect potassium and voltage-dependent sodium channels. These changes can result in agitation, confusion, and seizures. Um, cardiac effects have been attributed to sensitization of the myocardium to circulating catecholamines. Clinical manifestations. Uh, CNS excitation and depression, which typically happen abrupt in onset, uh, and these are considered the primary clinical effects of acute organochlorine toxicity. Therefore, patients may present with any of the following. Uh, initial euphoria with auditory uh, or visual hallucinations and perception, perceptual disturbances, uh, seizures and tremors, agitation, lethargy or unconsciousness, headache, dizziness or uh, paresthesia of the face, tongue and extremities. Pulmonary symptoms following inhalation exposure include cough, shortness of breath that may be complicated by acute lung injury. Dermal exposure is associated with skin rash and dermatites. Ingestion of organochlorine is associated with nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, besides the CNS manifestation. Unusual odor may be also noticed. For example, toxaphane may have a turpentine-like odor, and endosulfane may have a sulfur odor. Long-term occupational exposure to organochlorine pesticides may result in various nonspecific symptoms, such as headache, 
nausea, fatigue, muscle twitching, and visual disturbance. In addition, chronic exposure to these agents may be associated with the development of blood disorders, including aplastic anemia and leukemia. And therefore, uh, we stress on the importance of, the, of occupational history taking uh, for patients with chronic disease. Also, uh, hepatotoxicity and renal toxicity are recorded with organochlorine exposure. Uh, when it comes to management, uh, the history of exposure is the most important piece of information. Decontamination and removal, removal of all clothes uh, of the patient is a very essential step in cases of acute toxicity. Laboratory studies uh, may include blood glucose, blood electrolyte, renal and liver function tests, arterial blood gases and urine analysis. Uh, ECG is important to detect any cardiac abnormalities. Plasma and red blood cell choline stress testing may be considered in cases um, where um, organophosphorus compound co-exposure may have occurred or if offending uh, or, or if the offending toxicant has not been uh, determined and the patient presents with signs and symptoms of um, cholinergic uh, toxidrome. Chest radiograph may be indicated in case of aspiration or acute lung injury. Uh, abdominal radiograph may show evidence of radio-opaque chlorinated pesticides uh, in the abdomen. When the history of exposure is unclear, a head CT scan and lumbar puncture should be considered to rule out uh, a central nervous system process uh, or infection as a cause of the seizures and the altered mental status. Uh, when it comes to treatment, attention to the uh, ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation, uh, and uh, keep in mind to protect the airways at all times. Uh, then we consider a skin decontamination by washing with soap and water and removing clothes, uh, which is, uh, should be placed in a plastic bag to avoid um, the contamination uh, or uh, harm to other surrounding people. Um, we do not induce emesis because the patient may have sudden change in mental status and could uh, aspire the gastric content. Uh, also to avoid a strong external stimuli, uh, which may uh, precipitate uh, any convulsions. Gastric lavage is performed with activated charcoal with cautions to avoid aspiration pneumonia. And for eye contamination, we need to do irrigation with water for at least 15 minutes. The role of pharmacotherapy here uh, is to reduce the morbidity and prevent complications. No specific antidotes are available for organochlorine poisoning. Rather, the medications used in these cases uh, are only symptomatic. Uh, including gastrointestinal uh, decontamination, beta blockers, vasopressors, benzodiazepines, and other anticonvulsants. Bile acid sequestrants, which are substances that um, bind to highly uh, lipid soluble compounds and prevent them from uh, being reabsorbed through the uh, interior hepatic uh, circulation, uh, are considered, uh, including cholestyramine. Uh, cholestyramine binds to organic chlorines in the intestines and prevent uh, its reabsorption through the anterior hepatic circulation. And they retain these uh, complexes in the GIT uh, for fecal elimination. Now moving into pyrethrins and pyrethroids, which are plant origin. Pyrethrins are natural compounds that are extracted from the dried flowers of pyrethrum plants. Pyrethroids is the name given to the synthetic derivatives resembling the natural pyrethrins. These are two classes of uh, pyreth uh, pyrethroids, which are type 1 or, and type 2, depending on whether they exert system systemic toxicity or not. Uh, they are commonly used as household pesticides and insect repellent sprays where applied on the outer surface of clothes. Most 
photosynthetic insecticides targeting the nervous system proteins are summarized in this figure. Pyrethroids, like DDT, bind through the voltage-gated sodium channels, preventing its transition from an active ion conducting to an inactive non-conducting state. Uh, as a result, the, the membranes of electrically excitable cells become uh, persistent, persistently depolarized and the uh, ins insect is paralyzed and dies quickly. Often, uh, an, an, an action called knockdown response. However, these compounds are relatively safe to humans and do not cause CNS manifestations like other previously discussed insecticides. Exposure to pyrethrin or pyrethroids may happen through the skin, which is the most common, leading to erythema, vesiculations, and mild paresthesia. Other modes of exposure are unlikely to happen. If a person is exposed to a very large amount of pyrethrin or pyrethroids through uh, inhalation, it may lead to uh, symptoms of uh, upper respiratory tract irritations, uh, such as sneezing and hoarseness of voice, up to laryngeal edema. Uh, affection of the lower respiratory tract uh, may lead to irritation in the form of in the form of cough, squeezes, dyspnea, and chest pain. With prolonged exposure, the patient may develop hypersensitivity pneumonites. Uh, symptoms following GIT exposure include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and cramps. Treatment. In this condition is the treatment of the symptoms using sedative, anticonvulsants, bronchodilators, or antihistamine. Decontamination is essential by washing the affected area with uh, copious water and uh, gastric lavage if the compound is ingested. Now we're moving to naphthalene or mothballs. Mothballs are white solids with a characteristic odor uh, with the active ingredient is naphthalene. Naphthalene is a polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon which is used directly as a moth repellent, insecticide, anti helminthic and sometimes as antistinal antiseptic. Naphthalene can be absorbed by the oral, inhalation and dermal routes of exposure and can cross the placenta in amounts sufficient to cause fetal toxicity. The most absorbed effect of naphthalene toxicity following acute oral or inhalation exposure in humans is hemolytic anemia. Associated with decreased hemoglobin, hematocrite values, increased reticulocyte counts, presence of Heinz bodies, and increased serum bilirubin levels. Infants and individuals having congenital deficiency of erythrocyte glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase are especially susceptible to naphthalene uh, induced hemolytic anemia. Clinical manifestation of toxicity includes um, blood disorders in the form of hemolytic anemia with hemoglobinuria. Naphthalene toxicity is one of the causes of methemoglobinemia. Acute oral and uh, subchronic inhalation exposure of humans to naphthalene has resulted in neurotoxic manifestations in the form of confusion, lethargy, uh, vertigo, and some gastrointestinal distress. Hepatic effects include uh, jaundice, hepatomegaly, and elevated, sera, uh, elevated liver enzymes, and renal uh, effects may lead to renal failure. Uh, management of uh, cases of naphthalene toxicity include a detailed history, investigations in the form of routine uh, lab work, such as complete blood count, liver functions, and, and kidney functions, uh, toxicological screening for naphthalene uh, to detect naphthalene metabolite in urine when it, whenever it is available, uh, urine analysis to detect hemoglobinuria, and uh, detection of methemoglobin level in the blood. Treatment, as usual, starts by stabilization of the patient and checking his vital functions. Decontamination by gastric lavage has no role in this situation, but administration of uh, active, uh, activated charcoal may decrease the further absorption of the compound. Uh, total bowel evacuation and cathartics may decrease liver toxicity. Uh, blood transfusion is performed to correct severe hemolysis. Corticosteroids may help limit the hemolysis of the RBCs. 
Miss Eileen Blue is uh, indicated for treatment of methemoglobinemia. And care uh, for the kidney is done by monitoring the urinary output, correction of the hemoglobinuria by diuresis and alkalinization of urine. Now moving to the last uh, group of pesticides in this lecture, which is um, rodenticides. Uh, starting with zinc phosphide, uh, which is a commonly used in rodenticide baits. Commercial products are often available in dark gray powder or pellets. After ingestion of uh, metal, metal phosphides, phosphine gas, which is the active ingredients, will be released. Uh, due to contact with moisture or hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Uh, subsequently, this gas uh, will be absorbed into the bloodstream, bloodstream through the stomach and the intestine and gets captured by the liver and the lungs. Phosphine gas produces various uh, metabolic and non-metabolic toxic effects. It combines with cytochrome C oxidase enzyme leading to cellular death. Clinical symptoms are uh, circulatory collapse, hypotension, and shock symptoms, uh, myocarditis, uh, pericarditis, acute pulmonary edema, and congestive heart failure. Exposure to zinc phosphide poisoning uh, may happen accidentally or through suicides, as it is easy to get from uh, pharmacies and local stores. Also, it causes rapid death. The mortality rate after exposure to a metal phosphide is around 37 to 100%. Clinical manifestations. Um, the most common clinical signs and symptoms of, of toxicity are nausea, vomiting, abdominal and chest discomfort, uh, profound hypotension, severe metabolic acidosis and acute renal failure may occur. Hepatocellular necrosis is also uh, a common complication. CNS manifestations include headache, fatigue, ataxia, uh, paresthesia, and kinetic tremors. Toxicity of the eye uh, causes diplopia and um, blurred vision. When it comes to management, laboratory investigations include uh, arterial blood gases to detect uh, the pH of the blood, uh, liver enzymes and kidney functions to monitor um, liver and hepato, uh, hepato and renal toxicity. Also, toxicological screening of zinc phosphide whenever it is available uh, may help uh, in monitoring the case. Treatment of zinc phos uh, phosphide toxicity is mainly supportive and symptomatic. The use of activated charcoal is challenging. However, it is recommended that a dose of activated charcoal should be given to poison patients as soon as they are received by an emergency department. Treatment with bicarbonate is needed to reverse the acidosis. Um, ICU admission and 100% oxygen may be needed in cases of respiratory failure. The other compound used as rodenticides um, is uh, warfarin, known also as um, oral anticoagulants. Uh, these are compounds that act as vitamin K antagonist, inhibiting the synthesis of vitamin K dependent coagulation factors. Exposure to warfarin overdose can uh, lead to uncontrolled bleeding in any part of the body. This includes sudden bleeding from the nose, gums, or skin. Internal bleeding may occur up to intracranial hemorrhage, leading to convulsions, coma, and death. Lab work in such cases focuses on the coagulation profile in addition to routine blood work. Treatment includes uh, stabilization of the patient if needed, followed by decontamination through gastric lavage and activated charcoal. The antidote for this uh, condition is vitamin K1, but the manifestations uh, take several hours to be reversed. Therefore, the transfusion of uh, blood of fresh blood or blood product is sometimes essential and life-saving. Um, I would suggest that you uh, all watch this uh, short video uh, for an easy illustration of the mechanism of toxicity of the main uh, four classes of insecticides. And with this slide, we came to the end of this lecture. Here are some conclusions to wrap up what we have learned uh, in this topic. Uh, pesticides are chemicals that are used all over the world to eliminate pests. However, people are exposed to the toxic uh, effects of these compounds. 
Organic phosphate compounds are the most common uh, pesticides used in Egypt, and uh, they act by causing irreversible inhibition of choline esterase enzymes. Atropine and auxines are the specific antidotes in treatment of, of cases of organic phosphate toxicity. Carbamates are another group of pesticides. They are, le are less toxic than organic phosphates, uh, since they have a shorter duration of action and their effects on um, acid and choline esterases are reversible. Pyrethrin and uh, pyrethroids are uh, compounds that are um, that are derivative from uh, plant origin and uh, they most commonly used as household insecticides relatively safe to humans. Uh, in cases of toxicity use uh, pesticides, supportive care of the patient is the main line of treatment besides uh, decontamination. Protective measure and safe handling of pesticides are essential to prevent toxic exposure. And uh, at the end, I would like to thank you all for your attention, and uh, I would be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, here, here's my email, uh, and uh, wish you all good luck.